remember how long it's always been this way Running 90 miles a minute all night and day Doing things that'd kill a lesser man or get him locked up tight Never meant to hurt nobody, no, I ain't like that Just trying to make my way any way I can There's a lot of folks out that want to slow me down, make me act right My name's Erica Green, I'm from New Albany, Ohio um, Run and operate Bix Body Shop and CIA Performance Also the head honey of Horsepower Honeys um, Just got into the performance business about five, six years ago Been in the body shop business for whew, 22 years now um, I started in June of 99 in the body shop. My dad owned the body shop. We also round tra track raced my whole life. So I've been, grew up around racing and horsepower. So I have a passion for it, for sure. Um, in 2015, Jeff bought me, a, do you want me to keep going? Okay, <laughs> in 2015, Jeff bought me a fifth gen Camaro. It was my first race car. Um, that was when I decided I wanted to learn to race myself. I've never really been interested in round track racing, but definitely interested in the 30 second thrill. <laughs> so it's a, I have a lot of fun with it. Um, the businesses keep me busy. Um, the honeys keep me busy, but I, I really enjoy what I do. And we definitely have a passion for cars in general. So no matter what it is. Yeah. yeah. So the Camaro he bought off of Tim Donaldson. Actually, I think, John Belcher had it at the time, but Tim Donaldson had it, Tim the Tooth, um, owned it previous to. It already had a Vortex supercharger on it when I got it. Now, mind you, I'd never raced anything, but Jeff thought it was a good idea for me. So, um, made a couple passes in it, got a little better at it. Um, obviously, with the performance side, at that point in time, we weren't a Vortex dealer. We were a super or a Pro Charger dealer. Um, so I decided to put an F1X on it um, that snowballed tremendously, put a turbo 400 in it, I put a carbon fiber roof on it, Lexan windows, um, roll cage, sheets, harnesses, and as somebody that was just learning to race, I made it very unfun for myself. It was a full-blown race car. So. Jeff was having issues in Old Pearl here. Um, every time he floored, I'd go into limp mode. Couldn't figure out why. Apparently it was driver mod, because I got in it. It's never had an issue, <laughs> so. I don't know what why he does that to him, but uh, so we we swap cars. I was like, you take the fifth gen, I'm gonna take Old Pearl. Um, we've had a wonderful bond ever since. Won quite a few events as well. My husband won't line back up with me, but we're gonna make that happen sooner or later. So, <laughs> um, and then I gave him the fifth gen. Um, he at that point in time he was building the big tire car, so he asked me if it was okay if he sold it. I told him I didn't care. I had my car so he could do what he wanted with it so that was kind of how it went um now that i'm a little more comfortable and obviously most people know i i blew up the car back in july um i've contemplated what i'm gonna do with it i'm not real sure yet um i really like having a fast daily driver i don't know if i want to go full-blown race car or not um so we'll see he's got the chevelle so we'll let him race car and me daily my, my, my 10 second daily driver. <laughs> so let's see, I believe my first win was in 2018. That was cash days at Pacemakers. That was my very first win. Um, obviously a mostly bracket race because I race with the girls. We range from nine second cars to 18 second cars. So we, we bracket race because it makes it fair for all of us. Um, so I won my first event and it was exciting. Um, I'm not sure why, but in 2019, I had a hell of a year, um, and those wins were, even though it wasn't my first win, they were bigger wins. Um, I won Streetcar Takeover Columbus. I am still reigning champ, Queen of Columbus. Um, I won my first Pour Your Own Puddle No Prep Flashlight Start at Marion that year. Um, that was a heads-up event. That was the only heads-up event I've won. Um, 
can't remember. I've won a few other ones. Um, I came runner up in Modern Muscle this year at, on a Wednesday night at Jag, the Jag Series at National Trails. So I, I've, ha I've had a lot of fun in the short amount of time I've been racing. Um, I think my husband gets a little frustrated. He's like, I've been racing my whole life. How do you go and win six times in one season? I'm like, because I got a good squad behind me. That's all I can say. <laughs> All right, so as I mentioned, I started at the body shop in June of 99, but um, I had a friend that actually lived over in this neighborhood. Her grandma would pick me up from school, um, so she would drop me off here. So technically, I started here when I was probably 10 or 12. Um, obviously, I didn't do a whole lot at 10 or 12, but helped out around the shop, um, learning little bits here and there. I did prep a couple uh, junior dragster chassis and help him do stuff, um, just learning the ropes of it. Um, in June, I worked at Kroger from 94 to 99, and in uh, my senior year of high school, my dad was like, are you going to ever come to work for me? So in June of 99, when I graduated, um, I started working here. I knew nothing. I pretty much sat behind the desk, answering the phones, reading magazines. Um, started seeing that he was missing money on final bills from insurance and things like that. So I just kind of stepped up to the plate, learned the ropes, showed him where we could do better and do different things. Um, and I just, I ended up being his right hand. Um, so for 23 years now, unfortunately in, um, 2015, my dad passed away from brain cancer. Um, so Jeff stepped up to the plate, helped me, which was awesome. Same year, um, had some people come to us. Uh, we went into business partners and that was kind of how the performance shop bloomed. Um, unfortunately, a few years in that ended. I'd funded everything, so I figured, oh, we got it. We might as well go ahead and do it. And that was how CIA performance came about. Um, we just don't give up. We just, we, we go, we go, we go. And I, I got that from my dad. You know, he was here all hours of the night as a kid. You know, he'd be in the shop by himself. And I remember, you know, my mom bringing him home dinner. And, and now <laughs> I'm doing the same thing. So, um I love it, so it's what we do. Um, Want to build a future for my kids. Hopefully, that old cars and all of that will still be good at that point in time. Um, but we've expanded. We're under, I think, 40,000 square feet now. Um, we started, um, some of you may know, there's a little brick building next to my front glass front building. That was actually where my dad started in 1980. Um, belonged to the Yoho's family. Um, then he started renting the glass front building, which was not glass front at that time. Um, where our large building is um, with the lifts, where the performance work goes on now, um, used to just be an empty lot. Um, he's just added on, built up, bought around him. Um, so now we're under 40,000 square feet total, which is awesome. But as Duncan can attest, um, it's a lot of walking when you got to go from the front to the back and back up. So um, it's, 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 it's a blessing and a curse. Um, I love it. I love the car community. I love the cars. But on the same hand, it's, I spend probably 60 to 70 hours a week doing it. And even if I'm not here, when, you know, I'm at home, you know, somebody's asking me about getting them tires or, and I'm not as young as I once was. My memory's not as good as it used to be. Um, so I don't quite remember. So please forgive me if I ever forgot to get back to you on something. I apologize. <laughs> My name is Jeff Green from Columbus, Ohio. Um, owner here at CIA Performance. Pretty much day-to-day -day operations. Just I don't get to do none of the cool stuff. Get to give the dogs baths, sweep the floors, that kind of thing. You know, whatever it takes. Started at a young age. My dad was uh, was a racer. Grandfather was a racer, street racers. Um, remember, about 13 years old was my first pass on the street uh, on a motorcycle because I was lighter than my dad. Uh, so we, you know, obviously 
just hanging out, hung out with a lot of guys, the Teasley family, Danny Horn, you know, old school legends that, you know, was out on the streets doing it. And I just looked up to all those guys and always wanted to do it. Um, would, would steal my dad's cars every now and again, you know, make passes on the street. Uh, got a little more into motorcycles when I was a little bit older. Um, raced AMA Pro Star. Um, did a lot of street racing with that. Went from, you know, bouncing and out of the car scene. More, I mean, I have did a little bit of everything. Hydraulics, you know, the low rider stuff, you know, the mini trucking stuff, the stereo equipment, you know, uh, crank it up contests. Anything automotive, you know, was, was kind of my thing growing up because, you know, that was what the cool kids did and, you know, that made you cool, I guess. What society thought you, you know, made you cool. Um, this all started, I mean, it's always been a passion of mine. You know, I've always been a painter. My, my uncle had a hot rod shop in Washington Courthouse, Ohio. I remember as a young kid, probably 12 or 13 years old, um, I wanted to do a paint job. And my dad had bought a brand new truck. And they, <laughs> my first deal of helping paint something was a flame job on my dad's brand new truck. So, you know, that's kind of where I got my feet wet. And then, uh, you know, just being around hot rods, doing the old school car show thing. Um, hung out up here with Vic, uh, my father-in-law, at a young age from about 13 years old on. He brought me in, kind of showed me the ropes of painting and, you know, the ins and outs. And would preach to me about, you know, working, <laughs> working hard and doing what I'm supposed to do instead of being out in the streets. But um, just... You know, cars are my passion, so, you know, fast, slow, whatever it is, we, you know, I like to do it. Anything automotive, you know, I just have appreciation for it. Lifted trucks, anything. Um, I think it's in my blood. Uh, my first race car was a Maverick Grabber. <laughs> Thought it was the fastest thing on the planet. <laughs> uh, 200 shot of spray. Um, my dad wouldn't let me race it though that was the thing like I had to baby steps so I started by doing burnouts in my driveway this is I was 14 14 years old he wouldn't let me take the car out because he thought the car was fast too so I would I would turn the nitrous on do a burnout and make a dry hop in the driveway that was my practice so when he was at work though I'd take the car out um, I grew up around the neighborhood and another name uh, everybody probably recognizes is Perry Stanley Hong good friend of mine we would go around racing each other um, <laughs> then I put the car back but my dad would always notice like more rubber on the quarter panel so he would you know he knew bottle was empty you know I needed fuel he put two and two together but uh, that was that was my first race car um, I traded it for a 70 Monte Carlo with a big block in it, and I thought that was it, you know. Um, and this back when, you know, if you went 1350s, you 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 had something. I mean, back then, I didn't think they would never make a, a car faster than, you know, a 396 big block with a 200 shot on it. That was the fastest thing out. So um, that was my next race car, and it just kind of evolved from there. Shortly after, I, I, I really got more into bikes, um, just because of the crowd I was with, and, and it was a little easier to race the bikes. You didn't have, you know, you didn't have to have big trailers and whatnot. So, did a lot of street racing on motorcycles. Um, kind of took a lot of time off from racing. Growing up, just for you know, I worked a lot, you know, trying to keep myself going, saving money, um, staying out of trouble. Then. Me and Erica got together and got back into bikes, went around racing motorcycles. Um, I think it was maybe 04. Erica bought me a Hayabusa for my birthday. And uh, <laughs> it was like <laughs> the first day it got to the house, you know, stripped it down, turned it into, you know, a race bike and went all over to, you know, following AMA Pro Star, racing that and having a lot of fun and street racing. And then, by the end of like 05, you know, my 
my bike had turned into, I worked with Brock Davison and got the motor right. Sonny Kirshner would ride it for me. And, um, you know, Mikey Davis, we'd race every day, trying to get it faster and faster. And then, you know, in 04, it was an all motorbike hand clutch. We'd ride it everywhere, you know, it'd go 820s or something like that. And that was fast enough, you know, for a street bike. And we, uh, me and Erica was going to have our first son, so I, was, I started slowing down as far as the uh, two-wheel thing kind of got scary. You know, falling off on two wheels didn't appeal to me no more. Um, I was worried about my, you know, my son being born, so kind of stepped away from racing again, took a break, um, got back into the cars probably... 2010-ish, maybe, and in and out, more stereo equipment stuff, you know, that kind of thing, wheels, you know, I've always been into customizing stuff, and we started, a, a partnered up with a local tuner and started a performance shop, and uh, kind of got me back into racing cars again. Don't remember exactly what year that was, 2014 or 15, somewhere around there, and um, yeah, kind of bought a Corvette, raced it for a while. I, I bought Erica a uh, 2010 Camaro for her birthday one year. I overbuilt it just like I do everything, <laughs> so she ended up not liking it. We had got the Cadillac in on. Uh, a deal and she liked that car a lot better so she ended up in it I ended up selling the, the fifth gen Camaro I took this car in on a on partial trade on a build that I did and um, it sat here for some time it was a bracket car stickers all over it um, just an old-school look you know I I told everybody I would never race it I wanted it to sit just to kind of preserve the history of it the look you know that era of race car um cadillac blew up <laughs> so i threatened to put erica in this car a little subpar on the brakes everybody knows it's got drum brakes seats not up far enough for her. and quite honestly i was ready to start racing again too a little bit you know so i wanted to get in the car myself so we switched it up put it on small tires Took the wheelie bars off of it, put a little bit of nitrous on it, changed a couple other little things. Fuel Tech come on board, gave us a hell of a sponsorship. Um, Bill Lutz blessed me with the back wheels. Um, these wheels on the front actually come off Yosha's Malibu. Everybody's kind of come together and, you know, I think wanted to see me go out and race finally instead of, you know, trying to help everybody and, you know, being on the sidelines. So, Everybody kind of threw, you know, threw something in, and uh, Eric Perini at Hot Wired come on, wired the whole car for me for free. Um, can't thank that dude enough. But it's just been, you know, the guys, JB, you know, uh, Luke, and everybody just pounding and putting in, you know, whatever we can to make the car get out on the weekends. And so now that's where we're at now, we're out here getting it. I started, I started here full-time when I was about 15 years old um, up front in a little building painting and, and working on rental cars that was all I was allowed to touch I, I didn't really listen well because <laughs> I was still a bad teenager so it didn't last long so I went away for a while come back um, at about 20 24 years old maybe and um, I worked here pretty much on and off full time uh, I, I would when I say full time it's because we work flat rate so I would put in 40 hours but I wasn't necessarily here five six days a week but um, doing just about anything I could do you know learning the ropes um, following Vic around Vic you know kind of mentored me on everything as far as how to run the business um, how to paint how to do body work you know the right way um, 
put in a lot of a lot of work. I used to do uh, rental cars because that was it, and it, that lasted about a year because I was I, I advanced that fast because I had come from body work past with my uncle and my dad, so I kind of already knew how to do it. I just didn't know how to do it the right way per se, and, and Vic showed me all that um, up through you know the years of just following Vic around learning what I could learn picking up little little hints and tricks and it was it was more of um, I I just I always wanted to to be a leader here more than anything you know I always wanted to get that role because me and Vic had a lot in common so you know it was like um, I paid more attention to that than I did the little stuff he taught me a lot um then unfortunately he, he ended up getting sick and you know I, I chased him around after that you know just trying to reassure him that you know i had this and you know i had i had this i could you know i could do it um pretty much you know i didn't really know how to talk i was i was from a bad neighborhood i didn't do really good in school so I, uh, I didn't really know how to talk to people, so being around him taught me a lot on how to talk to guys and, you know, how to talk to potential customers and, and you know, business opportunities. So I spent a lot of time just focusing on that and, you know, going to some of these big, con or you know, these big programs that we was on with the cars, that was important to me, learning that kind of stuff. And um, I get to do body work and paint more now because we're a little understaffed, but not as much as I'd like to. That that was always my passion, so I really enjoyed that more than I did talking to people and, and you know, because <laughs> I was really shy, so I didn't really want to talk to anybody anyway. But I knew there would come a day when I had to do it, so I learned it. And um, now, you know, it seems like it's all I do is talk people's ear off, but I'm really proud of what we do here. Um, I really, really, you know, always wanted to, just, to evolve the company. Vic, Vic was always afraid to step outside the box, which rightfully so, most people just don't think that way. You know, most people are comfortable, they're safe, they know what they're doing. Um, we talked about doing a performance shop years ago, even before he was sick. We even made flyers for it, but it was a big step. You know, buying a dyno and not having the backing as far as people, it was, it was a scary thing. So it never really got off the ground, and uh, I just took the leap. I said, you know, this is what we're going to do, and you got to evolve. You can't, you know, you got to think outside the box, and that's just what I've done with everything that I do here. You know, we do pretty much everything that you can think of under one roof. You know, it's pretty awesome. Pretty much when when we took over, start from there. Mm -hmm. Probably the best. Okay. You with the performance shop? With the body shop. Like, yeah. So, so day one, you got the keys, you're the owner. And how I came to you well, and I, afterwards, didn't. after a while, and I said, hey, I'm going to start a performance shop. I got uh, this bright idea. Yeah, that did kind of go <laughs> like that. But the ownership of the body shop didn't quite just, you know, keys passing over. Because, like I said, I've been here, I've been at the body shop since June of 99. So I've always, I've learned the ropes and I ended up running it for my dad. So when my dad got sick, naturally I took over. Um, so it, it wasn't, it wasn't a weird, it wasn't like, oh, you're, it's, it's you now kind of thing. Cause I just kind of naturally stepped into that place as I needed to. Well, and you to. pretty much ran day to day operations. Yeah, for, for probably 15 years. I, I mean, yeah, years. at least 15 years. Yeah. So, it, so really it, nothing changed no. much um, other than, you know, Vic got kind of sick at the end where he couldn't come in anymore and be here as much as he wanted to, which turned my role into I basically had to step up to what he did day to day, um, meaning going to, you know, the big dealerships that we done work with and um, a couple of the BMW stuff was our big accounts at the time. 
There were a lot of things, too, that, you know, I didn't see that my dad took care of that, unfortunately, you know, the trimming the weeds and, you well, know, cutting the little grass that we do have around here and um, making sure the dogs are washed and light bulbs are changed and, you know, the everyday maintenance that, you know, I run the office. So, and, <laughs> what's that? And counselor for the and employee, counselor, you know, yeah, yeah, babysitter. Security guard for the place, you know, <laughs> just stuff that you don't really see, you know, being an employee. You kind of take for granted because you leave at the end of the day where you know vic was the owner so he, he you know he was here doing it and when he wasn't you know we've always been a smaller operation even though we're kind of big compared to most it still is you know just a family-owned small shop that we do most of the work ourselves, and and you know um I stepped up into that role and she pretty much just maintained where she was at and um, then I came to her. It was in 2015. With a bright idea. Thanks to a, another buddy of ours, Josh Smiley. He said, hey, you guys should start a performance shop. <laughs> um, there was another shop around town, IPS Motorsports, that was closing down. Um, and Crucial Performance had problems with their previous partner so it kind of just seemed like the right thing to do we were friends with uh eric scambalone from crucial performance so we we had recently just purchased this building yep, as well and yep. really didn't have a plan for it other than we were doing some body work and stuff back here but it was just right place right time right facility so i went it to just... i went to my wife and i said hey i got this <laughs> this idea and uh we, we partnered up with them, and, and we let them run the performance side of things pretty much the way they wanted to. Um, we butted heads a lot because we had, I mean, it was one of those things. We did just different personalities, and uh, it grew old fast. We ended up separating three years in. Mm -hmm. three, yeah, three years in, um, but we weren't done. I mean, it wasn't the end for us. It was... It was more of we, you know, we worked really hard building that and, and, you know, for the half that we did, and we didn't want to lose that. And um, more importantly, we wanted to show everybody that, you know, we could, we could still do it. And, and this was our passion, so we wasn't going to just let it, let it die like that. And, and my dad always wanted to do a speed yeah. shop because he was a round track racer, so he was around racing his whole life as well. My grandpa yeah. raced. Um, so he always wanted to do a speed shop, but he, he knew with the speed shop, you needed to have a good tuner. And at that point in time, they, we just didn't know anybody or anything. So he just never did it. So it was, it was pretty bittersweet seeing the dyno go on the ground, knowing that that was, that was one of his wanted, goals yeah. as well, yeah. that I could try to and make that dream come even, true for him. Even though the first partnership went south and that was a bad deal for us, it was still just a stepping stone into the growth of what we are. You know, um, we needed it. I mean, that was just the beginning. Um, and now, you know, with CIA, you know, we've teamed up. We got a hell of a team here. Um, couldn't ask for better guys. And it's it's one of those things where you know, we love what we do so much. It's it's not so much about the money. You know, a lot of people that, from the outside looking in, it looks amazing. Um, but anybody in the performance world will tell you if, if they if they know the books of the performance shop it, it, you're not going to get rich doing this this is not a million dollar business by no means this is a labor of love you you do this more for the passion than anything um, our drive is, has been a lot of you know we're racers ourselves we've I've been a racer um, I got her into drag racing um, I've lived it we just we've always wanted to have a company that done everything automotive under one roof affordable for the guys that didn't take advantage of of you know a guy wanting to build his car which there's nothing wrong with profit but we wanted to do it and bring it to the racers at a affordable deal you, you know what i mean like we're not here gouging people we don't own a boat you know, we don't we don't even own our own home. I don't own a motorcycle, you know, and there's nothing wrong with any of that. I'm, I'm just saying that we do everything here for at a minimal uh, to give back to the racing community. That way, you know, the guys, 
their money goes a little longer or a little further. Um, so that that's a lot of what we do here. That's the drive behind this business um, and doing things the right way. Vic taught us that, you know, don't even touch it. If you're not going to do it the way it's supposed to be done, don't do it. I mean, that's just the bottom line. So everything here is just, you know, the best way that you could possibly do it at the best price you can do it. You know, uh, we take a lot of passion in that. I mean, a lot of pride in that passion. Um, I'll keep talking. So, you know, <laughs> uh, this means a lot to us. We just, this, this is what we do. You know, we, we don't pretend. Um, you, know, you can see the companies out there. I mean, they've folded uh, because they were pretending, you know, and nothing against any of the companies that didn't make it. Uh, but you got to be about it, and, and we're about it, you know. Um, we're about the society of the of what we do. This ain't, you know, we're, we're not worried about, she does more. <laughs> she worries about, about the profits more than I do. I worry about, you know, helping the racers and helping the, the race world, street, you know, track, car shows, whatever it may be. Um, that's what it's about for us. And then, you know, we're best friends, so this kind of, it's, it, it's pretty easy for us. You know, we see each other all day long, but we barely get to see each other because we're so busy. And this is my buddy, so we get Doesn't to do this Doesn't mean I don't want to cut in sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all good. But, uh, yeah. No, we get along for the most part. He's had my back for the last three years yeah. racing, and I, I couldn't ask for anything I will more. say this. It, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's a double-edged sword when you get your wife into racing. And she's not a racer, but she has a strong passion for it and becomes a racer. <laughs> you you, you kind of go, you love it because you're proud of her and she's having fun. But you go, man, she does it better than me. You know, <laughs> now I have less money to do it, you know. Um, but, no, we love it. We have fun with it. And, you know, it's, it's awesome. She, she still hasn't beat me, though. I just want to put that on record. That's because after I've gotten some seat time, he has not relined up. So yeah. you best believe hey. in, mark my words, okay. as soon as old Pearl is back together, still have Shug and Pearl got a date. Not if, not if we don't line up. I'm just saying, if you don't accept the lock-in, then there's no race. I'm Sounds like someone's saying. scared. <laughs> I mean, you can call me what you want. I've still won all the races that we've raced. So. The whole two of them. <laughs> That's two you ain't getting back. <laughs> but who holds the records in the car? Zuh. Yeah, we won't. Car Zuh. <laughs> I'll be quiet. Now. But I'll talk again later. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> pretty much, and we'll kind of go through, but we pretty much ever offer everything but audio and window tint. And we have yeah. vendors that we work with hand in hand to do that. But uh paint Ooh, work alignment oil changes superchargers we'll headers, start up front. cams <laughs> yeah detail ceramic coat That's, polishing uh, wheels tires lift kits um tuning yeah <laughs> well here just a real quick i mean we have um when you come up when you when you start in this our deal is usually we bring a customer in it's it's a it's the beginning of a relationship and it's about a relationship and my goal is to create a relationship for the rest of the time the rest of my time anyway um so you feel safe with me um come in we sit down you meet the staff you go for a tour so you feel comfortable in in your decision of, and and we recommend everybody to go to different shops you know, there's there's definitely quality shops in this town. We're blessed in Ohio. We have more dinos than any other state in the whole United States, um, which Central Ohio, they used to have more shops, but there, you know, there's still a handful of shops here in Central Ohio that are amazing shops. It's just about what works for you, you know, and, and we invite people in to, to you know, do interviews or you know do a tour to just make sure that we're the right fit um it usually begins with the you know we office staff you know smiling face and you know someone who's honest and and you know very um informative and you know can mm -hmm. help you as much as they can that's the beginning of it 
Um, we also have a detail staff, so we do um, full details here in house ceramic coatings, you know, um, from minor in and out washes to, you know, full paint corrections to, you know, clear brawls, anything you can think of in, in the detail world. Um, from there, um, nitrous fill station i think oh, yeah. this yeah, year we've probably led that in in ohio because <laughs> i'm trying to buy every bit of nitrous from every supplier around <laughs> um and we've kept a supply of nitrous so we, we've done really well with that um we have you know a couple of probably the best techs around right now um pretty well known they got a pretty good following uh they really know what they're doing. They really care, and that's big for me. They care about my stuff as well. Um, Building-wise, I mean, we do everything from, you know, mild builds, cams, bolt-on stuff to full-blown builds. I mean, you know, we got one of two Noonan blocks, build blocks for LTs in the whole world, and they're right now going together, uh, you know, do a lot of pretty pretty major builds. We don't specialize in one thing. A lot of people make that misconception. Um, it's pretty even here. Hellcats, Mustangs, Corvettes, Trailblazers. I mean, everything, yeah, as far as the domestic brands go, um, we work on anything, though. I mean, if you want to, if you, you know, the right things. If you, if you want something done right, we do it. Uh, Tuning, we also outsource tuning. We remote tune with, you know, the best tuners in the country, which is a pretty awesome deal. Um, we also, you know, we're the kind of company that works with other companies. We try to be, you know, good neighbors in the industry. Uh, you get pretty much anything you want here nowadays, though. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty neat little company. We're pretty proud of it. More than anything, you're not going to get taken advantage of. That's that's important for us. Um, you know, we're going to give you the best deal possible. Uh, you know, uh, we're always going to be honest with you. I mean, that's big for us. We we try to preach that and you know make sure you're comfortable using us. Auto body stuff, though. I mean, we do collision. We do custom paint work. I mean, got some of the best equipment as far as the painting industry goes. Uh, Garmat downdraft booths, which is, you know, some of the best stuff. We we upkeep that stuff pretty tedious to make sure it stays nice. We produce some pretty quality paint work here. Um, we're pretty proud of that. Uh, yeah. About, about it, it. yeah. We do a lot. We do. <laughs> <laughs> we do a lot. We have fun doing it too. That's yeah. that's important. I mean, this really is what we love to do. And it's exciting uh, yeah. as much for us as it is, or it's a, as exciting for us to watch the customer pick up and oh, yeah. see yeah, that's amazing. see them yeah. excited too. Yeah. You know, both ends. Unfortunately, on the body shop side, they're excited to see their car back together, and then on the performance side, they're excited to see that their car is now making quite a bit more horsepower so yeah it's yeah it's it's That's exciting. good stuff yeah and we get to play with cars i mean who don't like to play yeah. with cars right <laughs> I mean, got a dyno yeah. in house that's you know that's awesome you get get to see some of the coolest stuff on there which uh i we, think i don't know my favorite's not necessarily the biggest horsepower thing like most people would think like oh man like yeah. bill lute's car max the dyno out but that car's not really that cool, you know. I mean, it is. I, Bill knows his car's cool, but I like some of the weirder stuff, yeah. you know, Porsches mm -hmm. and some just random stuff that you see. Um, some of the cheaper stuff, I think, I get more impressed yeah. with. Anybody can buy something, you know. Some of these younger guys now, they're just, they're doing, you know, just the most random swaps into the weirdest cars, and the, I, I get a big kick out of that. And getting a tune, that's pretty awesome. We have customers that, you know, they're getting new tires. They're like, can I can I burn the rest of them off? And we make sure the lot's oh, yeah. empty. And donuts are do good for the soul. <laughs> we do donuts. We do burnouts. The, you know. They like that stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's exciting yeah. for them. 
and, and we're not uh, we're not the politically correctest people ever. <laughs> um, we got thick skin here, so we talk a lot of shit, and we don't cut each other slack. So if you're part of the team, you run a sticker, or you know you're one of the guys that race out of this shop. Know that we will not cut you slack. <laughs> we <laughs> we give each other hell, don't we? Oh, yeah. We push each other though. I mean, we we just you know we're blessed. We you know. Bill's been a big part of our program, Bill Lutz. He's an awesome dude. Um, you know, we don't necessarily do anything motor-wise on his car, but we've done a lot with his program, and um, we're pretty proud of that. Uh, which I think you know, painting the car all over. Uh, I mean, built the body on the car. I mean, we've done a lot. We've done miscellaneous deal, everything. <laughs> I mean, you know, Bill's you know a hell of a guy, and we 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 absolutely love helping Bill out, and you know. If you know anything about us, we help a lot of people. Uh, Hong races out of our shop, and and to be a part of his program is awesome too. I mean, if you know anything about Next Motorsports or Isaac Preston or them guys, I mean, to be on board with anything that them guys are doing, I mean, that's pretty impressive stuff. I mean, those them guys, they they really got a handle on no prep drag racing and uh, for our little stuff that we get to help you know Hong with on his car. It's just cool being a part of it and, you know, everybody coming together and collaborating on something um, is pretty neat. Uh, C.J. Buckner, he's another one that, you know, we, we absolutely have a blast with him. I mean, we help everybody. I mean, there's the list goes on and on. I can, I can just keep going. Um, but it's fun. I like staying on. My favorite, though, just let me, let me set the record straight. My favorite is Erica Green. <laughs> She's my favorite racer. <laughs> I I appreciate and love helping her more than anybody. Um, even before I got back into racing, I had a lot more fun, you know, watching her win and uh, <laughs> pull back up and you know be smart. Which she smiles anyway all the time. But you know, see her smile and win and get that feeling was was pretty amazing to me. She's probably won more in a year than I've won in my whole career of racing. But uh, yeah, had a good year. Yeah. Yeah. 2019. Yeah, yeah, a real good year, didn't you? Not it was. <laughs> And then I got on so just This is more of just having fun kind of thing, getting back into the no prep stuff. Um, yeah. We're going to have fun. Yeah. I have a turbo truck we're building right now, but I want to sell it so I can build Pearl. So yeah. I think that's going to be the game plan for it. Everybody asked me what I was going to do with it, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be up for sale as soon as I get the motor back in it. Um, that way I can work on Pearl this winter. Um, thankful for Bill Lutz letting me use this Hellcat this season for a couple of races, because yeah. other than that, I wouldn't have been able to race this season, so I'm thankful for that. You're lucky. I am lucky. Man, you got me. <laughs> You'll just be loaning your cars. Man. <laughs> Any final thoughts? Um, stay tuned. I mean, pay attention to what we're doing uh, locally. Yeah, remember how long it's always been this way, running 90 miles a minute all night and day, doing things that'd kill a lesser man or get him locked up tight. Never yeah, meant to hurt nobody, no, I ain't like that. Just trying to make my way any way I can. There's a lot of folks out there want to slow me down, make me act right. 